All right, parents, are you ready to hear a parenting horror story? Now, I know we've all watched parents who are over-the-top crazy for their kids in sports, right? Well, the story of NFL football player Todd Marinovich and his dad Marv, this takes the cake. You see, Marv Marinovich started from day one completely managing everything about his son Todd's life so that he would eventually become an NFL star, something he was never able to accomplish himself. After harming his own NFL lineman career by overtraining and focusing too much on weight and bulk, Marv opened his own athletic research center. And he later applied the techniques he developed to his own young son, and introducing him to athletic training before Todd could even get out of his own crib, and strenuously continuing it throughout his childhood and adolescence. And after Todd won High School Player of the Year Award in 1988, Sports Illustrated did an article entitled, Bread to Be a Superstar. Now listen to some of what was in this article. Quote, he has never eaten a Big Mac or an Oreo or a Ding Dong. When he went to birthday parties as a kid, he would take his own cake and ice cream to avoid sugar and refined white flour. He ate only unprocessed dairy products and even teethed on frozen kidneys. When Todd was one month old, Marv was already working on his son's physical conditioning. Yeah, he would stretch his hamstrings and make him do push-ups. Marv invented a game in which Todd would try to lift a medicine ball onto the kitchen counter. As a toddler, Marv also put him on a balance beam. Now, these activities grew easier when Todd learned to walk. <laughs> but there was a football in Todd's crib from day one. Now, long after Todd's professional career had ended, an ESPN columnist still named the elder Marinovich, Marv, one of history's worst sports parents. Now what eventually happened was Todd got into drugs while in high school, and his drug problem got worse when he went into college and later while playing in the pros. And drugs are what ultimately ended his career. Today he's still in recovery and we really wish him the best. Now that, of course, is an extreme example of a parent living out their sports dreams through their child, and a perfect example of how it can go horribly wrong. Now most parents, of course, never go to such extremes, but it can be just as damaging when parents act pushy, even in very subtle ways. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with young athletes to help them clear up the pent-up hurt and shame that they have from trying to live up to their parents' expectations. I want you to check in with yourself as a sports parent here for a minute. Ask yourself these questions. Do you tell your kid what he did wrong and what he needs to do better in the car on the way home from the game or event? In the future, this is the worst time to do that. Or does your body language show your disappointment when you watch your child perform subpar? kids pick up on this big time. Do you ever hear yourself yelling at the officials? Kids cite this as the number one most embarrassing thing that can happen to them. Do you force your child to participate in the sport when they really, really don't want to? You need to ask yourself, with all honesty, why are you pushing this? And is it worth it to your child's confidence and self-worth to just play for you? And what toll does this take on your family? Now, if you've answered yes to any of these questions, I've got a free ebook that you might get a lot out of reading. It's called The Ten Commandments for a Great Sports Parent. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free copy. This could be one of the most important things you read as a parent, to quickly learn techniques and tools to boost your child's confidence and to keep your communication flowing. Now I get so much pleasure at seeing kids playing for the love of their sport. And I applaud those of you parents who lay the groundwork to make this happen. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.